By the way, if I forget to mention it tonight in Late Night Cocktail Cam, somebody remind me, or I'm gonna be reminding myself now, to tell you the story about the stick and the wife. Today's cruise adventure took me to a place I had never been before, La Palma, which is one of the Canary Islands off the coast of Africa. After about a 45-minute bus ride, our hike began in the small village of Punta Lana, which is about 435 meters above sea level. It's great to be on land, off the ship, breathing fresh air. We are required to wear the mask at all times. It's a Spanish law, not a cruise ship law. So when you, when we're driving up here, we saw people like waiting at the bus stop, even if they're alone, also had mask on. So it's not just us. I was worried that it was going to be kind of chilly up here, so high above sea level, but it is definitely not. I'm glad I brought some water with to drink this time. Welcome to a new segment on the very unofficial travel guides called Fascinating Nature. The guide was telling us that this white flower here, this small white flower, is actually not from the island. It, somehow it showed up here and it's a weed called the Mexican Devil. Yeah, you can see it's all over the place. So it's not actually from the island. And once it showed up, it kind of took over and there's no way to get rid of it, they said. After watching so many episodes of Border Patrol Australia and Border Patrol New Zealand, when you see how if they find that people have hiking boots or any kind of like shoes packed in their bags, that they check to see if there's soil on it. And if there is, they take them and wash them and, uh, with a brush. And that's the reason why they want to prevent things like this happening. And when you see it, and you see how much of this white flower is literally like taking over this part of the forest. I guess it makes sense. This dog started following us a while back. The guide said that it belongs to somebody down at the bottom of the path and it very often goes along with the group, but it just stopped there to eat a dead, some kind of small dead animal, a mouse or something. Glad it's not my dog. Deeper into the forest we go. <laughs> Try 
try Do you know I'm looking And I can't help but smile Do you know how much I love you You put my favorite song on I put my feet up And we just sing along And I can't help but feeling Surprise, this is Morgan from the future. I just want to show you where we are right now in relation to like the height and the distance, okay? There's the group going back down to the buses. We, the buses are right there. So we came down to the buses and then walked up here and now we're going back down to the buses. But if you look and you can see this blue house there and then a little bit higher than the blue house, there's a little like dot on this cliff. That's where we are right now. And now back to the regularly scheduled program. Just loving this moment. Can we stay here forever? I'm loving this moment. Can we stay here together? If I could stop the time, don't you know that I would? Cause I'm just loving this moment. Can we stay here forever? Okay, now it's starting to seem a little bit more like a like a creepy forest. The trees are getting closer. There's less sunlight. And I'm kind of far behind from the group. Let's hope I don't fall down and smash my head open here. It'll be a while before they realized. But maybe the doggy would help me. Would you help me, doggy? Doesn't look like it. He or she is like, screw you. I'm catching up to the group. From growing up in Minnesota, it feels like there should be tons of mosquitoes here right now. You know where you like, when you're in the forest and you come out of the sun and then you go into a place where it's like shady and cool. Like, I feel like I should be getting eaten alive by mosquitoes right now, but there are none. I want to ask the guide if that's just because of the time of the year or if there, if there aren't any here. Wouldn't that be nice? I want to move here. Okay, this definitely looks haunted or like there's a gigantic spider that's going to come down and snatch me. Please, please spare me. I have a cat at home that needs me. I made it. Pretty. I don't know. Are you sick of seeing all these shots of ferns and trees and rocks and stuff yet? Secret word is fern. Write that in the comments to let me know you've watched all of this so far. The guide told us this area was coming up. He said it's going to be really deep on the one side and that there's a fence. But not to trust the fence. He said don't lean on it. And I definitely won't. No problem following that rule. <laughs> Don't want to fall down there. The guide just told us that this species of fern can grow to be around nine feet tall, two meters, he said. And that when it gets its maximum height, then the seeds start growing at the very end of it and it starts bending over. And then when the 
gets so big that it can't stand up anymore. Then the seeds plant themselves in the ground and a new plant starts growing and then it breaks off from the original plant. Fascinating nature. Just to give you an idea of how steep it is, this is me looking straight ahead. And this is the path we're gonna go down now. Now I understand why the guide told us we should take the, the hiking canes with. I skipped it, oh well. And here's a relax minute. Put on your headphones, turn up the volume and listen to the sound of the forest. Okay, back to the group. I did just have a fly land on my arm and I tried to blow it away. I was like, why won't it go away? <laughs> Mask on my face. Let me know in the comments below also, what's the silliest, most embarrassing, stupidest thing you've done because you forgot that you had a mask on and you should have, whatever it was you were trying to do won't work. I like to read those stories. Okay, listen to this. You can hear the water running under the ground. Listen. Does that mean that there's probably a high risk of a landslide here? Let's keep moving. We are now outside of the forest again, obviously. Oh, now I miss Chili. Yeah. Free hugs. There's a pipe going along the side of the street here and I can hear water in there. And now I'm pretty sure that back up there in the forest, that wasn't water, just, you know, kind of splashing underground. I think it was a pipe. <laughs> There's the buses, so I guess we're getting close to the end. So I thought we might be walking all the way back down to the ocean, but now that I see how far it is, obviously we're not. Little bit too far to walk. Oh, but there is a nice swimming pool right there. Reminds me of the pool in National Lampoon's vacation. I'm trying a new place for lunch. This is the Fuego restaurant that has burgers and pizza and pasta. And so I got some fries and a veggie burger. And if you look here, this veggie burger is actually, you know, it's like peas and carrots and other veggies in like a breading. So it's not an impossible burger or, you know, it's not made out of a soy or wheat basis. It's actually veggies and it's deep fried, which is really not, my preference just because I know I'm gonna get heartburn from all that if I eat all this and this. But hey, as always, nice view. What is that stuff behind me? 
french fries. An update here on the veggie burger. This is basically everything you don't want in a veggie burger. It's falling apart. It's like squishy. It's got chunks in it. Yeah, not a fan. Sorry. We are back in the cabin. And this is gonna feel so good. Ah. Oh my gosh. Boobies, ba -bong. That's an inside joke for the people who've been watching a lot of my videos lately. So I had a little bit of lunch. I really, I just had a few bites of that veggie burger and then I was done. And actually uh, the restaurant manager came over to ask me why or if everything was okay uh, she asked specifically about the burger and i told her yeah it's just i said it was it was made fine and i'm not gonna there's no big complaints or anything but it's just not what i was expecting in a veggie burger and so now i know i don't need to order that again and she said that usually they actually do have something else but uh they couldn't get it delivered so she said before we don't offer any veggie burger they're doing this and i said yeah that's cool, you know, thank you very much, and um, it's all good. So anyways, I'm back in the cabin now. I'm gonna get out of these sweaty clothes, and then I'm gonna go up to the pool deck <laughs> and get some sun. And uh, it's just, it's been such a great day. I'm so glad I could take you with me. I really hope you enjoyed watching that. But as far as me going up to the pool now, you are gonna stay here. No, no, no sassing, I don't wanna hear it. You're gonna stay here, you're grumpy, you're gonna take a nap, okay? So let me just put you down here. That's good, you're good, yeah, no, sh no sassing. Just close your eyes, you're gonna have a nice nap while I go up to the pool deck and I'll see you later. Here, I'll tuck you in, Bye bye Hello, hello, wake up. Did you have a good nap? You were out long. Look, we're sailing away. The late night cocktail cam.
The yellow lights in this room just do not do good things for the color of my skin, and I'm going to have to fix it in post. So you're probably not going to see how bad it really looks, but I'll show you for a second right here. Okay, so there's two things I want to talk about in Cocktail Cam tonight. Oh, first of all, I don't have I don't have a drink here with me in the cabin, but I had a margarita up in the inside dome of the pool area and actually kind of really liked that area as a like nighttime venue. I could imagine that, like I said in one of the other videos, it's perfect for all weather cruising. So if it was raining outside or if it's cold outside, you know, if you're cruising someplace like wintry, could still have great parties up in there and it feels kind of like outside because it's on the pool deck, you know? Okay, two things I wanted to share with you. One of them was my Starbucks experience this morning and the other one is this stick story. <laughs> one weird thing about the drinks in the buffet here is for lunch and dinner, you can get like house wine and beer included in the price of the cruise and water. And for breakfast, yesterday, I they offered me coffee and I asked if they had decaf and I would have had to pay for a decaf coffee in the buffet. And that seemed weird to me. And this morning when I, you know, was waking up and getting ready for the excursion, you know, <laughs> It's been a long time since we've talked about this on this channel, but when I'm out and about, I, you know, there's this bathroom thing. Before I leave the ship in the morning, if I have an excursion that's, you know, going to be like we were doing today, hiking through the rainforest, I want to make sure that I, you know, take care of business before I get off the ship. And of course, coffee really helps with that, but I don't like to drink normal fully caffeinated coffee it drives me crazy it gives me my heart starts racing it makes me shaky i don't like it but decaf coffee decaf coffee has the same like effect as far as taking a dookie and they advertise a starbucks cafe here on board and it's way down it's like it's like at the part of the ship where the medical center is so it's i think on deck three and you can only get to it from one certain stairway. And so I went down there and, okay, the next part of the story is total first world problem. I don't want to read anybody complaining about me, complaining about Starbucks in the, in the comments. I warned you. Ready? So I was down there at maybe 7.30 and it opened at 7.30 and yeah, I mean, there was nobody else there. There were two, uh, two guys working there and they were, they seemed surprised that somebody showed up there. By the way, I found out that there's not even 900 people on the ship. It's a ship that could take, I think, 4,300 passengers and there's not even 900 people on board. So, so yeah, these two dudes that were working there were totally surprised or seemed surprised that somebody showed up, you know, like they were leaning on the counter and, you know, it's, it advertises, uh, we serve Starbucks. And well, first of all, I asked, do you have decaf? And they were like, yes, we have decaf. I said, good. Okay. I will take a grande cafe mocha decaf. And then I asked, do you have almond milk or soy milk? And the guy was like, no, no almond milk. And I said, okay, do you have soy milk? And he said, yes, we have soy milk. I said, okay, so with soy milk, please. And he scanned my card and was pressing things in the register. And he's like, so you want a cafe latte? And I was like, no, I would like a cafe mocha. Oh, yeah, yeah, cafe mocha. And then he explained to me that he had to charge me for the cup. They have, I don't know, can you see it back there on the thing? Where is it? Oh, it's not up there. So they have official Starbucks cups, like these sort of plastic to go cups that look like paper cups, you know, but they're like, you can put them in the dishwasher and stuff like that. And uh, he's like, so the cup costs you a euro, but you can keep it and you just keep bringing it back, you know, every time you come. And I was like, okay, that's cool. He rung me up and the other guy started making the coffee. And this is where I realized, okay, 
It's not really a Starbucks. Maybe they use Starbucks beans or something like that, but everything is just done by a machine with a touch button. So it's like he wasn't a real barista, you know, where you like put the grind the beans fresh and put them in the thing and put it in the other thing and it goes. <laughs> so it's not like that. It was like it was like a, you know, an automated espresso machine. So we pressed all the buttons on the touch screen, started making the coffee. And I think he made some small talk or something. He said, Cafe Mocha, right? And I said, yeah, and, and it's decaf, right? And he's like, mm-hmm. And I said, are you sure? Because if I have that big of a normal coffee, my heart is probably going to explode. And he's like, yeah, oh, okay, uh, I'll make it again. So obviously he didn't make the decaf. And I mean... It's not like any, there was nothing else going on. He was standing right there while I ordered it. He obviously heard me say decaf and I obviously ordered a decaf to the guy on the register, you know, who was standing like two feet away from him. And when I asked if they had almond or soy milk, the the guy taking the order said, no, we don't have almond milk, but the guy making the coffee said, we have soy milk. So he poured out the coffee, went through all the buttons again, found the decaf mocha button, pressed that, coffee came out. He put the lid on it, gave it to me. And he's like, so yeah, sorry. It's just not very often that people come down here to order and, and you know, never decaf. So I had to find it. And I was like, yeah, that's fine. And then he's like, and you want soy milk? And I said, yeah, is there not, there's not soy milk in here? And then he started to make it again. And I was like, no, dude, just, just leave it. I'm fine with normal milk. It's fine. And, you know, I'm not complaining about it. I just can't believe that I was the only person there. They, they literally said, you know, nobody usually comes down here. And then it took them it would have taken him three times to get my order right, even though there was nothing else going on. You know what I mean? That just seemed, just seemed weird to me. Total first world problem. And it made me giggle. And I thought I'd share it with you. Okay. The other thing is, I don't know what to think of this. It happened at the beginning of the excursion today. Hold on. I got to change my position. It's hard at this time of night to to lay like this for so long. So at the beginning of the excursion today, I mean, when we got out of the bus, when we started the hike, the guide was like, I have hiking sticks here. And because some of the terrain is quite steep going up and going down and can be kind of slippery, some of the rocks can be kind of wet. He's like, I have these sticks. There's one for everybody. And even if you usually don't hike with a hiking stick, I would suggest you take one with. And I actually grabbed one and then gave it back really quick because I realized there was no way that was going to work with filming. And I got along fine without of it, without it. But so <laughs> my group of 20 hikers was, you know, all standing around when he said that. And the first guy who went up to get one said something like, what did he say? I have to translate it in my head. It was something like, ah, a big stick. Good. You know exactly what I need to keep my wife in order. Or maybe it was even a little bit harder than that. It was something like, like, good. Now I've got something to hit my wife with to keep her in order. But I don't know. There was just something really creepy about it. And it could have been funny if it was, you know, like if, if he was with a group of a bunch of friends and everybody knew each other, including his wife, that could have been funny. But I mean, we were all strangers and he's making a joke about hitting his wife with a stick. It, <laughs> it did not, it did not land well. He would have not gotten a recall. He would have not been invited to Las Vegas. The show would have been over for him in that moment. But in case you didn't see it in the video until now and I didn't say it that was an amazing hike and so cool I'm so glad I did it and I have to say I'm so glad I did the first hiking tour on the volcano on my last cruise because if I hadn't done that and just seen how cool it was I never would have done this today 
and this was, I want to say better. Tomorrow, I'm doing another biking tour. It's hopefully, I'm pretty sure it's not as hardcore as the one I did on the last cruise where I had to quit and where there's a video now on cruising with wheels where I told them a little bit of the story about me trying to book it. That just went online today in my world. I don't know how long it, how long ago it's gonna be when you watch this, but if you haven't seen it yet, go to Cruising With Wheels and look for the video with me and the thumbnail. This little collab we did together. And hi, you guys. Thanks for doing that. Anyways, that's all for tonight. I have to take these contacts out of my eyes. I can't forget about that. And then I'm going to bed. Good night.